The tricky thing about synonyms is, well, they're not always synonyms. And I'll show you what I mean. Have a look at this sentence. Getting a band nine in IELTS is very hard. That's true. Now have a look at this sentence. Getting a band nine in IELTS is very challenging. Do these two sentences mean the same thing? Well, yes they do, and that's because hard and challenging are synonyms. Words or phrases that mean the same thing. But are they always synonyms? Have a look at this sentence. You have to work hard to get a band nine. Now, could we also say you have to work challenging to get a band nine? No. And that's because here, hard and challenging are not synonyms. Maybe a better synonym for hard would be diligently. So you have to work diligently to get a band nine. The fact that words and phrases are only synonyms in certain contexts makes them very difficult to learn. But that's what we're gonna to attempt to do in this video coming up. Welcome, my name is Eli and I run the website EnglishProTips.com where we help students get ready for the IELTS test. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at synonyms. So this video, this lesson, is divided into two parts. We're going to, first of all, start with a synonyms quiz where we look at some useful synonyms for IELTS, particularly IELTS writing. Then, in the second part of this video, we're going to be looking at some tips and strategies for how to learn more synonyms. Okay, so first up, we have the quiz. So look at this word, advantage. Now, this is a very useful word for IELTS writing in particular. So task two, where you have to write advantage or disadvantage essays. Now, we need to know some synonyms for this word. Here's an example sentence. There are several advantages of living alone. And here are two options, benefits and profits. Now, which one of these words could be used as a synonym for advantage in this sentence? We would say there are several benefits of living alone. So advantages and benefits are synonyms. But remember, not all the time, it depends on the context. And we also have other synonyms that we can potentially use. So we have benefit, merit, or upside. So by using these um, synonyms, words like benefit, merit, upside, we can have a larger range of vocabulary. So different words, instead of constantly repeating the next advantage is, the following advantage is. So these words will help us get a higher score in IELTS writing. Number two we're going to look at disadvantage. So here's a typical sentence. One disadvantage of living alone is, and we have two options, weakness and drawback. Now, what would you choose as a synonym for disadvantage in this sentence? The answer is drawback. So drawback and disadvantage are synonyms. We can also choose drawback or downside as well. Okay, number three, for example. So this is a very useful um, phrase for IELTS writing again, because in order to get a high score in IELTS writing, it's a good idea to be giving uh, examples to explain our ideas and to develop our ideas. But we don't want to be constantly saying, for example, for example, for example. We need synonyms. So what would you choose as a synonym for for example? Here are two options. By instance and for instance. And of course, the answer is 
for instance. So we can say for instance and we can also say an example is or one clear example is or such as. Now you'll notice I've put a star but before some of these phrases and that's because we need to change the grammar of the sentence slightly. So we would say there are several ways to save electricity. An example is using energy saving bulbs or one clear example is using energy saving bulbs or such as using energy saving bulbs. So do you see we need to change the grammar in the sentence from for example you can use energy saving bulbs to an example is using energy saving bulbs. So that's one thing that's very important to bear in mind when we use synonyms. We often have to change the grammar of the sentence. So that's called paraphrasing and we're going to cover that in a future video for sure. But let's move on with the quiz. Number four, internationally. Many students choose to study internationally. My guess is one or two of you watching this video is choosing to study internationally. So instead of saying internationally, what would you say? Abroad or universally? The correct answer is abroad. So instead of saying internationally, we can say abroad and we can also say overseas. So I want to study overseas means I want to study internationally. Moving on. Number five, a very important word in IELTS is important. Learning how to cook is an important skill. Here are your two options. What would you choose as the correct synonym for important in this sentence? The answer is essential, an essential skill. And we have some other options. We can say essential, crucial, necessary, or my favorite, an imperative skill. So imperative means very, very, very important. Okay, moving on. Number six, job. It's crucial to choose a job which interests you. Here's the two options, profession and work. In this sentence, a good synonym for job would be profession. So we could also have occupation or career in this sentence. Remember, the type of synonym you use depends very much on the context, so on the sentence and the idea that you're trying to convey. So for example, career and job might not always be perfect synonyms, but in this sentence, and this is a very typical sentence in IELTS, they are synonyms. Okay, let's move on. Number seven, rich. Rich families often send their children to private schools. Here are the two options. And of course, the correct answer is affluent. So affluent families means rich families. And we can also say wealthy or well-off families. Number eight, make sure. So this is a very useful phrase for IELTS. Make sure. Parents make sure that their children eat vegetables. Here are two options, secure and ensure. If you said secure, then you are incorrect because the correct answer is ensure. So this is a nice academic way of saying to make sure, and it's very useful for IELTS writing. So <clears throat> instead of saying make sure, we can also say make certain. Parents make certain that their children eat vegetables. Number nine. Oh, and by the way, there are 20 questions in total, so we're almost halfway through the quiz. I hope you're doing well. A large number of old people live alone. Now, what can we say instead of saying old people? Here's two options. And what would you choose? The correct option is elderly people. So this is a polite way of saying old people. We wouldn't really say elders. It has a slightly different nuance, a slightly different meaning. 
For example, if you said elders, it suggests maybe the respectable old people of a village. For example, the elders of a village. And instead of saying old people, we also have some other options. We can say older adults or senior citizens. Let's move on. Number 10, young people. Young people are finding it increasingly difficult to find jobs. Now, here's two options, children and young adults. Now, depending on the context, both of these could be correct synonyms. However, look at what the sentence has. It says, finding it increasingly difficult to find jobs. So it's unlikely to be children. Children don't really seek jobs, but young adults do. And that's the correct answer. So again, remember, the synonym that you choose very much depends on the sentence. And that's why it's very difficult to learn synonyms. In this sentence, we could probably use teenagers or adolescents. Mm, maybe. It depends on the context of what you're trying to say. Remember, teenagers and adolescents really look at that age range from 13 to 19. So if we're trying to communicate that 13 to 19 year olds find it difficult to find jobs, then we could use teenagers or adolescents. However, if we're trying to communicate that maybe 17 to 28 year old people find it difficult to find jobs, then we could say young adults. It's all about what you're trying to convey. Okay, number 11, difficult. So we looked at some synonyms for difficult earlier. Here are two, challenging and demanding, and of course, the answer is challenging. But we could also say tough, tricky, or hard. Okay, number 12, a lot of. So a very common phrase in IELTS writing. And we need some synonyms for a lot of so that we're not constantly repeating this phrase. Here are two options, a great deal of or plentiful. And of course, the correct answer is a great deal of. I hope you got that one right. We could also say a, a considerable quantity of. So a considerable quantity of young people or a large quantity of young people or a large number of young people. Okay, moving on to number 13, improve. Technology has greatly improved over the last few years. Here are two options, advanced and recovered. If you chose advanced, then you are correct. We could also say progress. So technology has greatly progressed over the last few years. Moving on to number 14, outweigh. So this is a very useful word for advantage, disadvantage essays. When you say, I think that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, or I think the strengths outweigh the weaknesses. So what could we use as a synonym for outweigh? Here are two options. What would you choose? Well, we could say overshadow. So we could say overshadow or offset or exceed. Although exceed is slightly different. If you say the advantages exceed the disadvantages, you mean to say that there are more advantages than disadvantages. But if you say that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, you're saying that the advantages are more important than the disadvantages. These slight nuances should help you to choose the synonym that you want to use in your writing. Okay, number 15, relevant. Education should be relevant to children's needs. Here are two options, relative and related. The correct answer is related. So relevant, we could say pertinent or suited as well. Education should be pertinent to children's needs or suited to children's needs. So this kind of 
advanced academic sounding vocabulary can help you to get a higher score in your IELTS writing. Likewise with the next one, aspects. People find it difficult to balance their work and other aspects of their life. I know I certainly do, and I can imagine many of you do too. So what would you choose, facets or conditions? And the correct answer is facets. So facets of our life. That means aspects of our life. Okay, number 17, satisfaction. Getting an answer right gives you a sense of satisfaction. Two options, gratification or gratitude. Similar sounding words, but slightly different meanings. So the correct synonym here is gratification. So gratification and satisfaction suggest that feeling of feeling happy when you do something well, or you do something mm, correct. Whereas gratitude is more of a feeling of being thankful. So we could also say gratification, delight, fulfillment, or contentment. These are all uh, synonyms for satisfaction. 18, so we've only got two more. Students appreciate a good teacher. Two options, value or welcome. The answer is value a good teacher. Appreciate and value are synonyms in this sentence. And I couldn't think of any more synonyms, so I don't have the little blue box. But if you can think of any more synonyms for appreciate that would work in this sentence, then leave a comment below this video. Number 19, problem. One problem that many people face is, and what could we say instead of problem? What would you choose, pain or issue? The answer is issue. One issue that many people face is, and instead of saying issue, we could also say obstacle or again, predicament. Okay, number 20. I've been working all day, but it feels as though I've achieved nothing. So we need a synonym for achieve. What about these two? Which would you choose? The answer is accomplish. It feels as though I've accomplished nothing. It's an awful feeling. So we could say accomplish or produce or manage. And again, manage we would use slightly differently. We would so say, but it feels as though I've managed to do nothing. We've also got a very nice idiomatic expression to convey this idea. We can say, I've got nothing to show for it. So I've got nothing to show for it means if I feel like, or I've achieved nothing. So I worked really, really hard and I've got nothing to show for it, meaning I've achieved nothing. Okay, let me know how you did in this quiz and stick around because now we're going to be looking at some tips and strategies for how to learn synonyms. So we have found three ways that we think are very effective for learning synonyms. And the first way is actually my favorite. So I'll explain it. This is something that one of our Facebook group members came up with, and it's a very, very good activity for learning synonyms. So what you do is you take a sentence. So we've got a sentence here. In some countries, owning a home rather than renting one is very important for people. And what we want to do is to rewrite this sentence or paraphrase this sentence so that the meaning doesn't change. And so you can see some examples of what the students in our Facebook group said. So this is a brilliant strategy for learning synonyms and for learning or improving our paraphrasing skills. And if you want to take part in this activity, then you are very welcome to join our Facebook group. I'll put a link in the description below this video, but it's also something that you can do with other students, for example, in your classroom, or you can even do at home by yourself. 
it's just a good idea to have a teacher or somebody with a higher knowledge of English to look over your sentences and make sure that you're paraphrasing and using synonyms correctly. The second method is maybe a little less creative and a little less fun, but still very effective for learning synonyms. So what you would do is to look at a model answer, for example, a task to model answer written by a high level student or uh, an IELTS teacher. And what you would do, well, I'll, I'll show you. So take the question, so this is a task to question. Some people believe that individuals should be allowed to own a gun as a means to protect themselves and their families. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? And then you look at the model answer for this question. So here's the introduction and a bit of the first paragraph of a model answer. And then look at the question and look at what you think one of the key words is. So in this question, we have the word gun. Now read the model answer and look at how they um, paraphrase or look at the synonyms they use for the word gun. So some people feel that the possession of firearms, so here we have a synonym for guns. The possession of firearms should be legalized on the grounds that they are necessary for personal protection and maintaining the safety of their families. I would argue that this is a fallacy because the widespread possession of guns, okay, so they've used guns again, so no synonym here, but just put a circle around the word anyway, uh, will lead to a more dangerous society. Those who tout the importance of legalizing guns, so we have guns again, circle the word, argue that they are imperative for maintaining the safety of themselves and their loved ones. They point to instances where criminals were deterred from violent crimes because the victim had access to a weapon. So here we have another synonym for gun. So this is a very effective task for learning different synonyms for specific words. So here we've learned two synonyms for gun. We've learned firearms and weapon, which is uh, and a good synonym depending on the context. And we can also do this with longer phrases. So for example, here we have protect themselves and their families. So we would think, well, what's a synonym or a way of paraphrasing this idea? And if we read the model answer, we find personal protection and maintaining the safety of their families. So a very nice paraphrase of protecting themselves and their families. And we also find maintaining the safety of themselves and their loved ones. So instead of saying families, they've, the, this, well, whoever wrote the model answer has used the synonym, their loved ones. So again, this is a very useful task that you can do alone while you're studying for IELTS. Um, if you have access to some model answers. So if you're one of our members, then you do have access to model answers, band eight or band nine answers for a range of different task two questions. But you can also just find model answers online by typing in ta IELTS writing task two model answers into Google. The final method for learning synonyms is very simple. When your teacher teaches you a new word in your class, just say, are there any synonyms for that word? And give your teacher a second to think about it because it's tricky to think about synonyms for words on the spot. But if you do that, you're going to learn a whole range of synonyms and you're also going to learn the correct context for the words. So this is just a good habit to have over a long period of time and you will learn a lot of synonyms. Okay, best of luck with your studies and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. If you have found this, use, uh, this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe below. I'll see you in the next video. 
Bye then.